one thing about a yellow bill is that they're definitely a, a majestic bird, large, and uh, once you've heard their calls, why, you'll never forget it. We know that they, that there probably weren't very many of them to begin with, that they breed in a very restricted area, pretty much north of 60 degrees latitude in big lakes on the tundra. The type of habitat that they use, the other moons don't, don't utilize, so they nest in deep water lakes where the other loons nest in smaller ponds and have to bring food into the young where the yellow bills normally are able to get enough food for their young out of the lake that they're nesting on. Currently the yellow billed loon is being considered for listing under the Endangered Species Act because of its low global population size, its low reproductive rate, and concerns about over harvest. And that decision will be made in September of this year, 2014. Um, we've had a yellow billed loon, at least one pair on our lake, on our property here every single year since families have ever lived here since the mid 1950s. In our immediate area, it really hasn't made a difference. They've stayed about the same. Some of the reasons that we are considering yellow billed loons as a species of concern are because they um, have a very small global population size. There's only 16 to 21,000 birds, and that's a very rough estimate worldwide. The analysis under the Endangered Species Act takes all that into account. What do we know about them in the past? What do we know about them right now? What kind of threats? or pressures do we think that species is facing and what can we say and how much certainty can we say it with about what's going to happen in the future. We don't have a lot of information about the birds when they're off the breeding ground. So when there are birds that are failed nesters or too young to compete for ideal nest site, we don't know very much about them. So if there was something like an oil spill or some catastrophic event that happened, we wouldn't have a lot of information about how those birds would respond or be affected. And so my role is to examine that. And we do that by taking samples and looking at those samples for the contaminants or the chemicals of concern that are in them. They are toxic. They can cause damage to, particularly to developing young, like bird embryos in an egg. In terms of the effects on the local people, we will need to be really proactive in working with folks who are subsistence users or recreational users in the area about um, the additional protections and considerations that we need to give the birds. The climate is changing and we've got some critters that we might not see anymore if the climate change continues to change. They're definitely a species of concern and probably will continue to be a species of concern. Those big Arctic lakes on top of permafrost that they nest on, that whole tundra might be changing. We know that they're not very common now. We know that they probably were never very common. Uh, in the future, we kind of don't know what's gonna happen.